A leader could be anybody, and Center for Ethical Leadership sees that. Being a leader is not about power. Um, being a leader is about being humble. Um, being a leader is about seeing the strength and the light in each other. And it's really about being a bridge builder, um, about being a spark and a connector. Um, and that's what a strong leader does. And I think that that's what a true, strong change maker does. What I want and what I love and what I'm searching for is community, where in a sense everybody is a leader and nobody is a leader. We're just all connected and, and working together, working things out together, enjoying life together. Center for Ethical Leadership through Gracious Space is really changing communities in great ways. In 2010, I went through a maybe a four-day, three-day training on Gracious Space. For me, it was a game changer in really how I looked at the work that I do um, and how I empower others. Gracious Space was a way for me to collaborate better and to bring more voices. I've been applying it and living it and I carried that book around with me pretty much everywhere because I do believe that with Gracious Space in the center of our education conversation that we will move the needle and recognize families. I think that as we learn how to really listen to people in meetings and with family. It's when we learn how to listen, people also start listening in a different way. And I think that this brings a lot more understanding between people. That's what Gracious Space is really about. It's realizing that all of us have something to teach and all of us have something to learn. And it's creating the space for all voices to be heard and for everyone to be seen for the greatness that lives with inside each and every one of us. In the past, I was connected with the center through the Gracious Space. And I think since 2013, we are moving to a new pathway that is the peacemaking circle. I think the peacemaking circle is helping to map the power of decision making in different human services issues that we have in the community. And also, not only with the map, but with relationships and collaboration about this. This has been great for me and for my community on how to start the dialogue. I use the circle process to create a space for the conversations. This whole sitting down and slowing down and, you know, making space or, you know, making this a priority, like that is very much an activism. And so coming into together and being in the circle and doing the, the principles and the practices, that very much is a radical act. The actual skill of listening is not to be underestimated. Because when we sat in circle for two days, after that was over, it was obvious that we were a more in-tuned body. It was clear that people were way more willing to show up as close to being a whole person as possible. They saw themselves at the table. I think there was one woman who even said, you know, I am so happy that we are doing this because I can actually show up a whole human being. And that, when I heard that, like this, this is why, to me, that's at the heart of diversity work. Peacemaking Circle practice in King County Juvenile Justice is going to um, help create community, help lift up the lives of so many youth and families, particularly families of color, who are uh, adversely affected by the criminal justice system because peacemaking circles are going to become a form of detention diversion, prison diversion, alternative to prison and jail. The Center for Ethical Leadership serves as a binding agent. Because of the nature of its work, pulls in people from different institutions 
to do this work because we work in this way, because we develop these relationships with each other, we now help each other. And I think it's why we are putting so much effort in our community. We know that we can support people and help them to have higher positions, position of involvement in the community. They start as a volunteer, they continue learning how the political and the social system works, and then they can be incorporated as an employees. I wanted to thank the center for being one of the first organizations in our region to introduce peacemaking circles to communities, to schools, and to our juvenile justice system. The gift ultimately comes from the Tagish clan of the Klinkets and all the other cultures around the world who have kept these practices alive through very difficult times. They could easily have given them up or kept them to themselves. But I want to thank the center for being one of those uh, messengers um, in our region. It's really important. And there's that growth of relationships, growth of understanding, uh, growth of connectivity, so that shift can actually occur in the culture for a different way and a different mode of being. That is, I think, the power of the Center for Ethical Leadership. It just does what it says it does. It generates collaborative leaders. And you need to be in a good place with the people around you to be in a collective leadership. To have your people show up and say, oh, I've really been looking forward to seeing you guys again and come together and, and work and talk things out so that collectively we can all elevate and rise. That's magnificent. <laughs>